chapter 26 of our annual cycle of the Tanya study. And here the Alter Rebbe says, now that we understand how it's so close and easy, attainable for everyone to uh, follow the Torah and the mitzvahs, but now we must remember that there may be some things that come up as obstacles to be able to follow the Torah and mitzvahs. And that's what he's going to address today and in future chapters. So number one, the first thing you have to remember is that at the end of the day there is a battle. And we could win the battle and follow the Torah and mitzvahs. But it cannot happen if a person feels sluggish and lazy and sad and depressed. So the first thing we have to know is the only way to do it is if you have alacrity, if you have joy. As it says, you have to serve God out of joy. So you must have joy and alacrity <clears throat> to be able to, uh, to, to fight the battle of the Yitzhahara. You cannot do it if you don't have any uh, that type of alacrity and joy. So there's no room for sadness, depression, and worry, and stress. Even though it's brought down, it says that it's a good thing because there's profit afterwards. But that is only when it's done in the proper way where you're, you're looking at your status uh, of where you are in the world and, and the sins you may have done and, and, and how they're uh, taking control of you. And, and, and then through feeling sad, you, you sort of break through that klippa that has uh, become part of you, <clears throat> and then you go to joy. But <clears throat> this is not something that we look for, but this is something that, that that has to happen at times, and could happen at times. And like King Solomon said, that I've seen the quality of uh, wisdom over foolishness and the quality of light uh, over day. Uh, uh, day and light over night and darkness. And the question is, what, what's the great wisdom in this statement? And the truth is, there is a tremendous wisdom. Because you enjoy, you appreciate light after it follows darkness. You appreciate wisdom when it's coming out of uh, foolishness around you. And so too it is. When you have uh, the joy that follows after you take the time to uh, contemplate your situation, and during that time you may be sad, that's good. But the emphasis is not the sadness, the emphasis is the joy. And there are times when you have to have the, the, that sort of uh, focus on, on sadness. <clears throat> but not, it should not be a regular thing that you're involved in because you have to emphasize the idea of joy. So therefore, when it comes to uh, physical material matters, you should never be feel sad or depressed or worried or stressed. Why? Because everything that comes from Hashem is good. But it comes in two forms. Some is a concealed good and some is a revealed good. So just like God's name has four letters, yud and then vav Yudke represents the hidden worlds. Vavke represents the revealed worlds, which are lower. So the Talmud says, in the same way that we bless for good things, we have to bless for negative things in our life. But the question is, actually, according to the law, there's two different blessings. Hatova HaMetiv, well, God is good and makes good. One is the true judge doesn't mean the blessing itself. It's talking about our attitude, that we have to receive joyfully everything God sends our way. How can we receive joyfully? Because everything that comes from God is good. And on the contrary, if it comes concealed, it means it's coming from a higher place. It's coming from the concealed world, which is a higher part of godliness, that it cannot, it's too great to come down in, in, in a form of, of revealed good. So therefore it has to be hidden. We wouldn't be able to contain and, and to, to, to accept it, but it has to come. And we see them practically how we are in our lives. When we want to give a gift to someone, we package it, we, we give it with the element of surprise and, and hiddenness, because if you just gave it openly, you wouldn't have the same effect. But even in spiritual matters, we shouldn't get bogged down by, uh, by stress and by, by worry and by concern. Now, obviously, in the middle of the day, when you're doing your regular activities, all of a sudden you start getting worried about spiritual matters and start feeling down, that's for sure coming from evil inclination. Because the nature of a person that wants pleasure. If you're not getting pleasure in spiritual things, you're going to go to physical things to get pleasure in sin. So he wants to make you feel bad about yourself and therefore grab you into his 
chain of command and, and, and you follow them and to do sin, to follow your lust and sin. But even during times when you're doing spiritual things, this is not the time and the place to, 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 to have sadness. You have to make special times to think about your situation and, and, and to contemplate and then to be able to work your way through it. But um, the most important thing is that when you, when you have a moment of bitterness of your situation, it's what follows after, the joy that follows after. Now you broke through it, and now you're able to start anew, and that's what counts most. And that's what the focus has to be. So we have to always be in a joyous situation, never allow ourselves to get into uh, a sad situation, obviously depressed and worry and stress. And if we ever do it, it's because we control and we decide now we're going to contemplate a situation, but it's ultimately to lead to the joy that comes afterwards about the that God will forgive us and God will give us another opportunity. So this concludes chapter 26. To see the rest of our series, go to Chabad of the Town YouTube channel.